Everyone, this is three questions with Chip Jones. There we go, man. I told you, you got music. Love it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm actually here with Superintendent Chip Jones from Cumberland County, uh, Virginia. I'm actually going to be joining you all. I think it's the last day of July, right? It's July like, 31st. July 31st. So, hey, Cumberland County, if you are listening, we're going to give you a little <laughs> shout out. Give a little, there you know, you, you give it a little shout out. So, Chip, I'm really excited to um, join your community to connect with your people and actually have this time just to kind of chat. This is like one of my favorite things to do, uh, just to kind of know the superintendent before I go in there to learn more about you, learn more about your community. So thanks for taking the time uh, out of your busy day. I'm sure you got a million things to do. Uh, so thanks for being here today. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. I'm, I feel honored. I feel like I'm, I'm talking to a celebrity. Get out so, here. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, so Chip, we're, we're going to start off with the three questions podcast. And I know okay. um, you and I were talking, uh, you, you, uh, you know, have taught basically, I think elementary, middle school, the Z, which I wanted to teach, but you know, I wasn't allowed to because I'm terrible at science, which is a, we're gonna get <laughs> that's a whole other subject, right? Yeah, it's a little touchy subject for me. Um, but um, I know you've been a vice principal principal and now you're superintendent and, uh, you know, other roles in central office too. And so you've had a lot of experiences with, you know, many great educators, and many great educators in, in your school di district right now. But when you think of like a really great teacher, one that inspired you, who do you think of first and why? Well, the first one, the one that I've had a lot of great teachers, but the one that stands out in my mind that I just um, talked about her in a recently this spring is Michelle Crane. She's a special education teacher at Crew Primary in Nottoway, Virginia. Um, so, and the reason about Ms. Crane is when I trans when I started teaching in the fall of 19, it was 1998, um, I started, I was one of the teachers, you know, the school year had started and they had a position open and then I came in at the end of September. And it's always a hard transition when the school year mm -hmm. started and you come into a new school that maybe has some veteran teachers and different things. And so the special thing about Ms. Crane is she took me under her wing and became my unofficial mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, it was because I was, you know, I was young, brand new, had all these ideas and maybe kind of going against the norm, what had always been done. And so it was tough. And she just she inspired me and she, you know, told me to keep going and keep growing. And so I keep in touch with her. I send her a Christmas poinsettia every December right. and different things and I give her a shout out when I can. Oh, hey, well, we're going to give her a shout out right now. Hey, she's awesome. She's you awesome. Know, you know, when you're saying that, I, I, I was like, I had that too. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, that makes a difference. And we, we, we started around the same time in education, which, which is weird because you said to me, you've been in education, like you're going on to year 26. And I was like, wow, it's a long time. And then I was like, oh, I started one year after you. So yeah. It is a long what it I, is a long while. You you actually it's funny because you there's a point in the profession where you if someone asks you how long you've taught, you could answer it right away. But there's a point where you actually okay, when did I start? What year is it? And then you count backwards, and now you're like, Okay, I've been in it for a while. Yeah. And uh my first year, I had a really great teacher, uh partner who taught grade four. Her name is Marlene Bertram, still connect with her today. Um, but there is also a teacher and she was on the other side of the school. Her name was Marilyn Stork. And I still keep in contact with her. Um, her, one of her kids was actually in the other grade four class, which is probably why she liked me. Cause right. <laughs> she didn't, she didn't have to have her kid go through my class, right. but I used to, you know, they used to make me bread. I used to bring my dogs over and, you know, I was in a town where I didn't know anybody. And so it wasn't, you know, it was just like, it was nice. And I, I just, that, you know, it was like a terrifying move for me because I was moving away from my family and didn't know what I was doing. And so it, it's it's wonderful to hear that, too. So I, I, I love that. That that really reminds me. So I'm going to get a little Marilyn Stork. There you know, she listens there, too. So and um, Miss Crane I, is still teaching. I think she's in awesome. year 40 some. So same school. That's all. That's awesome. All right. So you you are currently a superintendent. I know you've had many different roles. Uh, school-based admin, central office administrator. When you think of like great admin, a great administrator, who is someone that sticks out to you and why? 
Well, that's an easy question as well. It's um, Amy Griffin. She is the former superintendent, uh, retired superintendent with Cumberland County. Um, I served as her assistant principal and then I became a principal and she moved to central office and then I moved to central office and I became her assistant superintendent for a number of years. So she sticks out because she gave what she did is she gave a physical education teacher a chance to be an administrator to transition into a new school system and just gave me opportunity to learn and to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's powerful. And, you know, it's just one of those things that there were high expectations and you strive to meet them, but it just, it really kept me going. So when she retired, the transition into this, into the role that I'm in now was probably a little smoother than most because right. I'd had the opportunity. I love that. And Amy Griffin, Amy Griffin still, uh, still super like retired now, right? She's retired, but she's the executive director for the Virginia Association of School Superintendents. Oh, really? Hey, we'll give hey, a little start. double Amy shout out, right? There are those two, right? So, uh, very, what, what is, is that? It's not V A, it's VAS, V A S S, V A S S. So, okay, yeah. well, that, that's awesome. And they, uh, when you're actually, talking about that and kind of putting I, like i actually remembered um my principal when i first became an assistant principal um archie lilico and okay. him and i it was funny because him and i would argue and fight <laughs> all the time but he would encourage that which is weird because he wanted he wanted me to push back on ideas because his thing was don't ever put me in a position where you disagree with me and don't say anything because then you're you're putting me out to like actually look bad, right? But right. like once a decision is made, you gotta back me up, right? Absolutely. You, you gotta back me up too. But like give me, give me the different perspective. And that's why we got along so well. And his his philosophy was I I was his assistant principal, but that his job was to make make sure I was a principal in training to actually yes. ensure. And I and that really helped me because I know there is a there's a there's a there is a different leadership style where people say like hey your your job is assistant principal don't ever think about being principal until you're there but then you're not really setting people up for success right? right and so he would let me into stuff and he would show me things that had nothing to do with my current job but he wanted me to have that transition and and it's the same thing like when i became a principal people were saying how hard it was and how complicated it was to make that shift and i was like when is that coming? Because I didn't really struggle with it. And it was because he put me, he put me in positions where, you know, I felt that like that principal in training. So I was not shocked at anything. Nothing came as a surprise because he made sure that he, he put me down too. So that, you know, I'm so grateful for that because it is nice to have that smooth transition where to be honest, I don't know anything different because of great leaders like that. So yeah, when I became superintendent, I will say July 1st, 2020, that was right when COVID <laughs> right, yeah. was here. So to be honest with you, I had all these experiences. I don't right. think anyone had that experience that we were experiencing. So I was just like, right. I don't know what I'm doing, but well, neither does the rest of the world. Well, I, I can't think. believe Amy didn't teach you how to be a superintendent during a pandemic, right? She tried, <laughs> but you know, hey. <laughs> right. You don't really have it unless, you know, during the Spanish flu, other than that, <laughs> right. you don't even have that too. All right. So last question. Um, you have had a ton of experience, you know, with a lot of great educators, um, and, and you know, you're, you're working with a wonderful school district. If you can go back to your very first year of teaching in 1998, which is, you know, only a year after me and is pro I probably should have started teaching before you, but it took me four, six years to get a four year degree. It so. took me six years to get a four year <laughs> degree as well. So, Hey, you know, in three different colleges and you know, my, I remember my mom saying before we get into questions, she was like, you know. Most people that have these many college credits have all these degrees. And um, she goes, like, they have a doctorate. I was like, Mom, I'll never get a doctorate. I can tell you that. And, um, you know, fast forward, now I have one, right? And it's just, and I will say this, a little side note. When I was a senior in the college, I got the chicken pox. Right. And um, you know how they say when it's, as you get older, it's worse. And I didn't have it when I was young, but it was pretty bad. And I remember work, meeting with my college advisors and they're like, hey, Chip, you probably need to drop out this semester. Now, I'm like 21 at the really? time. And I felt like a fool saying this, but I said, hey, you know, 
my mom said I can't drop out. So I was just <laughs> like, hey, she's, <laughs> so she's only paying this last semester. So, hey, That's we had it. to finish. I love it. All right. So go back. You know, I'm in the chicken pox stuff. If you can go back yeah. to your first year of teaching and you could talk to yourself, what advice would you give to yourself now or then? I think it's what we talked about, uh, you know, earlier is just – that you can do this. You have the confidence and you can do this and it's okay to try new things and you don't always have to fit the norm. Right. And you know, that you are there to, I think, I think the great thing about elementary school, and this is what I love. You're getting kids that are coming into a brand new place. You get them for about seven hours a day and you have a chance to make an impact on them and help them grow. Right. You know, and I, and I think about elementary PE and I, I approached it from this. And I remember having this college professor is it, it's not a, everybody thinks it's about just rolling out the ball and you're teaching these sports, but really you're teaching kids the activities to help them through lifetime. So I tried to do that, like wellness activities and different things such as that. So I would think it would say, Chip, you can do this and maybe have a little more confidence. Yeah. And I, I love that, that idea of like, it's very easy to fall into the trap of teaching the way you were taught. Right. And kind of saying, and the, I always give this example, right? And everyone's knows this in education is like, Hey, the bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. Right. And that's right. like a saying that we've said in education forever. And it's, it, it's proof because I said as a teacher at some point, and that wasn't like I made it up. It was, that was something that was said to me when I was a kid. And so it's really easy to recreate the experiences that we yeah. had. And so to kind of think about like, what are the experiences that you not, that you had, but that you want to, you would have loved to have as a student and try to create that for your class. And you don't have to necessarily recreate that. And I think there, there is so much power in that. So I, I love yeah. that. I'm, I'm really excited. You know, that, um, that's going to be a lot of what I talk about when I'm with all of, uh, all of your wonderful people. So I'm excited to join you all, but, uh, Chip, thanks so much for being on the podcast and everyone. Thank you so much for listening. I'm looking forward to learning more about Chip and I hope you watch that episode as well.